Hey everyone, this is Lomi, and today we're going to take a short crash course in fabric. We touched a bit on fabrics and cutting it in my video on creating a sewing kit, but today we'll explore some more basic terminology and how to prepare and cut fabrics to sew. So let's get started. When you set foot in a fabric store, fabrics are usually sorted by purpose, such as quilting, apparel, and special occasion. But regardless of the section, there are three primary types of fabric. Woven fabrics, like this cotton, are probably your biggest sewing staple. Then there are non-woven fabrics, such as vinyl and felt. Then thirdly, there are knit fabrics, such as this jersey, which is commonly used for t-shirts. Many athletic and dance fabrics, such as this spandex, are also knits. There are other types, but most fabrics you find will fall into these three categories. Woven fabric can be identified by a clear pattern of threads running both vertically and horizontally. These come in hundreds of colors, patterns, and fiber types, both natural and synthetic. They can be stiff or stretchy, thick or lightweight, but they all have one thing in common. Regardless of what a woven fabric is made of, the edges will shred when cut. This is worse in some fabrics than others, but we'll talk about that in a second. Non-woven materials are just as diverse. Materials like vinyl sometimes have a knit or woven backing, but since this is considered a reinforcement and not the primary material, it doesn't change how the fabric is classified. The vinyl is manufactured as a sheet on top of this backing and cannot be separated from it. Some non-woven fabrics are made this way, while others, like felt, are created by pressing loose fibers together. They're fused either by using hot water to press the fibers together in a way that they tangle and stick, or by chemically treating it to create sheets. These can be wonderfully versatile, since they don't have edges that ravel. But some pressed, non-woven materials, like this felt, can easily be pulled apart at the edges, and they can also stretch or tear. Last, we'll look at the knits. Knit fabrics are also made of all different kinds of fiber, but they're pretty much all stretchy. Knit fabrics tend to have distinct vertical ribbing on both the front and the back. One nice feature about knits is that the edges won't ravel when you cut them. However, if the edges get pulled or the threads in the center of the fabric get snagged or torn, it is possible to develop runs in the fabric. Sometimes knits have additives like lycra or spandex that can help them stretch farther. This spandex fabric has a shiny vinyl coating on top, but since it still stretches and the primary purpose of the fabric is the stretch, this is still classified primarily as a knit instead of a non-woven. The first thing to do when you take home new fabric is ensuring it's properly stored. Some fabrics don't need anything special, but others, like this slippery brocade, shred easily without even being touched. Satin also shreds very easily. One way to combat the edges shredding is to finish the cut edges of the fabric before you store it. This piece of silk had its edge finished with a serger, but you can also use a zigzag stitch on any sewing machine. Before you cut or sew anything, you'll also want to wash your fabric. This does two things. It ensures the fabric has already shrunk, which is important since some fabrics, natural fibers especially, are prone to shrinkage. If you wash it after sewing, the shrinkage could distort your garment. Washing it will also help remove extra dye from your fabric. Even after you wash your material, you want to do a dye bleed test before using it on a doll. To test your fabric for dye bleeding, all you have to do is cut a small square of fabric and put it in a cup of water, and make sure it's immersed. Let it sit for half an hour or so, and see what happens. After half an hour, the orange jersey I tested looks great. No bleed at all. I'll spread that out on the paper towel for the color transfer half of the test. At first I thought the black woven fabric had just shed a little bit of lint, but after comparing the water to the water the orange jersey was in, it's clear that this fabric had bled dye. That means this one is a definite no-go for my dolls. While there are chemicals you can soak fabric in to help reduce dye bleed, I prefer not to take the risk at all. If it bleeds, I don't use it for my dolls. I let the fabrics sit on the paper towel for a bit, and then check the orange jersey for color transfer. If the paper towel beneath the fabric doesn't pick up any color, this fabric is okay to use. One last thing we'll look at before we get cutting is the fabric nap. Some fabrics, like flannel, fleece, velvet, or this piece of scrap velour have a nap. 
which is the direction the fuzzy surface, or pile, of the material is designed to lay. It feels smoother in one direction than another, and also changes the way the fabric looks in the light. It can look lighter or darker, depending on which way the nap runs. You can turn the material either direction, with the nap going up or going down, depending on what kind of look you want. The only thing to watch out for is making sure you cut your pieces consistently. A friend of my mother's once gifted me with a very expensive custom-made velvet dress for a renaissance fair. Imagine how disappointing it was when it arrived and the panels were cut with the nap running in different directions, so the colors didn't match between the front and back of the dress. With all that out of the way, let's talk about how you handle fabrics when marking and cutting them. Start by checking your pattern to see if it has a grain line marked on the pieces. If so, match it up with the grain in your fabric. If you're using a woven fabric, that can be either vertical or horizontal, depending on what you want from the pattern. Line the grain line on the pattern up along any of these threads. If you're using a non-woven fabric, it usually doesn't matter as most non-wovens don't have a grain. If you're using knit fabric, you'll follow the ribbing as your grain line. If you're having trouble seeing the grain in a knit fabric, like me with this spandex, you can determine which direction to lay the pattern based on how stretchy the material is. Knit fabrics are almost always more stretchy from side to side than up and down. Looks like I have this one laying the right direction. There's nothing wrong with pinning your pattern pieces directly to the fabric to cut it out that way. You can probably see I've done that lots of times with this pattern piece. However, doing it that way can also tear up your patterns, meaning they won't last as long. So it's usually better to put the pattern on your fabric and then trace it onto the material, using either a water-soluble white pencil or another pencil that will wash out, or something like a friction pin from Pilot, as this ink disappears when exposed to heat. When working with tiny pattern pieces, it's sometimes hard to draw around all the pins, especially since using pins can cause the fabric to buckle. It won't lay evenly, so tracing can be tough. So a great alternative for working with doll-sized patterns is using weights to hold them down instead. You can buy pattern weights, but they don't need to be anything fancy. I just use big, heavy washers from the hardware store. I'm folding the waistband and toe back on this pattern to change it from tights into leggings, just in case you were wondering. White pencils work better on dark fabric, but this material is slick, so it's not taking very well. I'll try my other pencil. That one doesn't really show up on the dark material, so I'll switch to the pen. With a pen, it's sometimes harder to mark the edges because the tip is pointy, so it can pull at the fabric. This is very difficult with knits. If your fabric tries to stretch, try making lots of little short strokes instead. You can touch up your lines after removing the pattern piece. Then I'll mark the next piece. It's important to ensure these pieces are cut going the same direction. It might be tempting to flip this and see if I can save fabric by lining up the angle of the legs together, but that never gives a good result, so try to resist the temptation. It's better to use more fabric and have a higher quality end result. Now we're finally ready to cut these out. I'll show you the two most common ways to cut your fabric. First, I'll use my trusty dressmaker shears. The first rule of cutting fabric is to always cut away from your body. This is safer and gives you better control. Sometimes you have to use your fingers to manipulate the fabric, especially around tight corners, so going slow reduces the chances of cutting yourself. It's also best to make long, sweeping cuts instead of a lot of tiny ones. This gives a much cleaner edge to the fabric, and also reduces the odds of developing points of uneven wear on your scissors. Another great option for cutting out patterns is to use a rotary cutter with a self-healing mat. To use a rotary cutter, you'll want to put weights on your fabric. Then press the blade firmly down and roll, being sure to cut away from yourself. Watch your fingers because these things are crazy sharp. You can also reposition your pieces or your mat if something feels awkward or unsafe, so take advantage of that. A small cutter like this one is great for doll-sized pattern pieces and makes cutting fast and easy. It can even go around really tiny curves. So now that your fabrics have been completely prepared, it's time to finally put your project together. I've sewn a pattern similar to this before, so I won't put these together today, but I'll link to the instructions on how to do it, just in case you are wondering. 
We'll explore the differences between synthetic and natural fibers, and talk about fabric types a little more extensively in a future video. But this one's already getting pretty long, so that's all for today. I hope you learned something this time. Thanks for joining me again. Bye.